Hello, kitties! Today is going to be story time! Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the walkthrough. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be like an intermission part of sorts where I'm going to check my email. No, well, I am going to check my email, but I'm going to catch up on the stories and such that I haven't really gone through yet. So anyway, let's t see Gob's message here. Throat bomb. Uh, um, is this right? Do I just type or what? Yeah, okay. So hey, I was so happy you got me that honey candy. My voice came back and everything, but maybe I was a little too jolly. I started shouting and now I lost my voice again. I'm resting now. <laughs> yeah, this is the one that we helped in the trouble center. So yeah, there may not be much here in Far Outpost, but at least we got snow. Yeah, we have snow bomb fights here. That sounds very dangerous, actually. We put tiny bombs inside snowballs so they hit, that they explode when they hit. It's super dangerous, which makes it super cool. Um, um leave me out of that. <laughs> Unfortunately, it also makes it super illegal, <laughs> which is pretty lame, but come visit anyway. Later, gob. Alright, so the first person that we are going to hear some stories from is a certain shady fellow on top of roofs. Well, okay, just one roof here. Over... Wow, you're really slow going uphill. He's like... This guy right here, uh, what's your name? That guy's name is Grifty. He's a laid-back, rooftop, minstrel-type guy. He tends to know all the stories that get passed around Longport streets. For a couple of coins, he'll tell you one. And you never know, it might help out our, help out our travels. Alright, this is who I'm here to see. Good day to you, sir. Is there a tale you want to hear? These are the tales I can tell you now. So you got a bunch of tales, they're all pretty short, so don't worry about it. Seems like there's a lot, but they'll go by really quick. The Fearsome Demon. Yes, tell me that tale. Ages ago, a city flourished here in peace and splendor, with differently colored text. <laughs> but it was destroyed in a single day by a demon from the dark beyond. Historians claim a great calamity befell the city, but nay, it was a demon. The city sank below ground, and one quarter of the old city became the demon's den. This demon put fear into the hearts of all men, and sent out minions to take the land. And its den, its palace, grew rich, with the treasure stolen from all over the world. And that's the end of the tale. You can always tell when it ends off due to the color of the text being different. Again, the usual black. In order to increase its already formidable power, the demon created crystal stars to hold the essence of the heavens. One of these stars was placed in each country to exert the demon's influence. One of the castles built to contain these stars still stands near Petal Meadows. If... Uh, Alright... We are getting to know more about the crystal stars. The demon built a dungeon near its palace and filled it with terrifying monsters. All those who fell in disfavor were thrown into the dungeon to rot. Yeah, and the demon also had three dragon pets. Hooktail, Gloomtail, and Bonetail. These dragons flew across the land, spreading fear and sorrow over all. Even now, the mere mention of a dragon is enough to give some of the terrors. The hero who arose. Yep, 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 yep. One day, there came a hero who could vanquish the fell demon. The young toad from Petal Meadows was strong of arm, but shy of voice. All those around the boy teased him endlessly about the way he spoke. But when the demon cast his fearful gaze across the lands and reached out, the young toad used his strength and honor to defend his people, and he became a hero to all, despite his odd voice. <laughs> it just it just reminded me of my voice acting. <laughs> there was a wise Goomba from Bogley Woods, gifted in knowledge of the world. When beasts rose to take the woods, this no <clears throat> this knowledge helped the people fight them. And this Goomba, who knew the way that every monster would attack? She began to think of a way to banish all the monsters from the land. <laughs> a Koopa who traveled the world alone learned of the darkness covering the land. He went alone wherever evil dwelt, and it banished it with shell and sheer bravado. The monsters grew to fear the scar-riddled Koopa, who thwarted them at every turn. But the brave Koopa was finally taken in a trap set for him by the monsters. But then, a Boo who fought with the monsters came and used her magic to free him. 
the brave Koopa spirit had melted the heart of the cold blue lass. Hmm. The four heroes. This you'll probably find to be one of the most interesting of the tales. The Boo used her powerful magic to learn more about the evil they faced. We cannot destroy this darkness alone, she decided. Her face a grim mask. We need the toad hero of Petal Meadows and the wise Goomba of Bogley Woods. The Boo's magic drew the four heroes together to send the demon from the world. And so, the four heroes finally set out for the Palace of Shadow. Okay, maybe that wasn't the one that I was thinking of that... Uh, well, anyway, going on, going on. <laughs> the power of the world devouring demon was greater than any could imagine. But the wise Goomba soon realized that this was the power of the crystal stars. She thought of a way to take the stars and use them against the demon. She told the other heroes her plan and set it in motion, banishing their fears. The Boo's magic and the Toad's strength created a gap in the demon's defenses. At that moment, the brave Koopa seized the stars and succeeded in badly damaging the demon. Sounds good. But even the brave Koopa's stroke was not enough to end the demon's reign. The wise Koopa thought of another use for the crystal stars in that dire hour. She suggested sealing the demon forever with the crystal stars. All agreed. The heroes matched their strength with the power of the crystal stars, and they successfully sealed the demon's soul within the deepest part of the palace. Together, they made it so that only all seven stars could break the seal. Demon's curse. The four heroes thought they had sealed away the demon and all its powers. But the demon used a tiny opening before the seal was complete to curse them all. While holding the crystal stars, they'd feel nothing. But when they let them go, a black box would appear to seal their souls within. This is the one that you would find interesting. The four heroes traveled the world, scattering the stars so the seal would remain, but the last four stars each carried the curse, which claimed each hero. Yeah, you know those black boxes that gave us special powers like the paper airplane, the boat, etc, etc? Yeah, that's the four heroes! <laughs> From your... So the, all those uh, cursed chest uh, souls are really good people. I'm guessing that they're like pranksters or something like that, <laughs> which is why they do that every time you open one of their chests, you know, they, they say that they're going to curse you even though they help you. The hiding places of many of the crystal stars have now faded into legend, but some say that the wise Goomba hid one in the great tree. At that time, many monsters wandered in the nearby Bogley Woods. The tiny punies were always tormented by their fierce appetites, it was said. Pitying them, the Goomba hollowed out the great tree for the punies to live in, and I have still gotta rub their bellies one of these days. Arrgh! The punies are so grateful that they swore to protect the crystal star there. Mm. Once the Boo heroine hit, <clears throat> hit her a star in the steeple, ah, I can't speak, she was trapped in the nearby town. Some say the crystal star lies in that steeple still. That wasn't very informative. <laughs> the Koopa hero went to a southern island to hide, her, hide his star where none would find it. But the Koopa was so tired from his journey that the pirate Cortez stole it easily. <laughs> in that very instant, the brave Koopa was trapped in an inescapable chest. But Cortez did not realize the power of the star and lost it among his treasures. Ah, I love those cursed chests so much. The strong toad held his star and continued his arduous journey, but eventually the miles took their toll upon him and he collapsed. A traveling healer appeared by and <clears throat> appeared. A traveling healer happened by and saved his life. There we go. I can read. But the toad knew his fate was to be trapped in the box when the star was gone, so he asked the healer to hide the star in a secret place known to no one. Ah, uh, you all became legend. Two more, uh, two more tales. This one, the next one. After the demon was sealed within the palace of shadow, many refused to come near that place of terror. But as the years passed, entire generations forgot, and the penniless and the immortal, eh, pff, immortal, immoral began to congregate, congregate in this once barren place. This place soon became a populous harbor, the town of Rogueports and some even began to say that the underground city held a legendary treasure, but they were un unaware that demons slept beneath them still. And one more here, the magical map. The heroes knew that the seal might not last forever, and they sought to make the crystal stars available to one who might need them. Hint, hint, 
me. Well, Mario. <laughs> so we, before going to their individual dooms, they never they didn't go to their doom. They they were just simply trapped in chests and I'll oh, forget it. They made a map to all the stars, and to prevent an evil force from misusing this map, they placed it in a box that could only be opened by the pure of heart. Peach. And that is all for these tales. All right. So now what I'm gonna do here is head on over to the inn and hear Luigi's final tale because he finished his adventure. So let's go in and up, 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 up. Oh, look who it is again, the crispy blooper. Hey, you, remember me? It's me, Bluey. Man, that last battle was hairy. You have no idea. I was burned to a crisp, but I was actually kind of relieved, if you can believe that. But if you want the whole story, you should just ask Luigi here. Ha 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 ha. Really? You trust Luigi's storytelling? Let's see, adventures. Oh, of course. Me, I'm done questing for now. Yup, I scaled Hitstrong Tower the other day and rescued the fair Princess Eclair. That's one adventure I'm never gonna forget. Nope, it was just too exciting. It was just bonkers, bro. Want to hear what happened? It's a pretty long story. Yup, 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 yup. Here we go. Final story by Ouija. Well, like I said, it's a really long story. And this part is just crazy, but here it goes. Its strong tower stands at top of the dragged, unclimbable cliff beyond the northernmost DC. The winds whistle, whistle down from the cliff, howling about banshees, singing songs of hate. People say it's pretty much the scariest place in the world, and I had to go there. Locking out the bone-chilling howls, I somehow managed to reach the tower's door. I was terrified, but thoughts of Princess Eclair warmed my heart and gave me power. All of my companions felt the same way. They were with me to the bitter end. The door to the towel swung slowly open to reveal an inconceivable darkness. I tried to call out Princess Eclair's name, but I couldn't even breathe because, as I strained my eyes in the darkness, I saw the most terrifying beast of all. The Chestnut King himself appeared before me. He was monstrous and drooling. Um, a uh, little clarification on the Chestnut King. This might be a reference to the Goomba boss. It's something like Boss Goomba or Goomboss something like that um, from the first Paper Mario game as one of the early bosses and uh, he is apparently known as the Chestnut King in uh, Japan apparently or something like that and yeah this is this might be a reference to him perhaps maybe I'm not sure myself it could be but anyway let's move on <laughs> The Chestnut King himself appeared before me. He was monstrous and drooling. I already read that, didn't I? The whole thing. Puddles of toxic glue dripped from his mouth, melting the very ground at our feet. I couldn't stop shaking, but I gritted my teeth and faced the evil beast dead on. See, that's why it doesn't sound like it's Goom Boss, because he, he, he was not that threatening. <laughs> then again, this is Luigi telling the story, so... Who knows? <laughs> I dodged the king's fangs, jumped onto his chest, and gave him a hammer whack. My swing split the air and crashed dead center onto the chestnut king's skull. Hope powered me up, bro. I was going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the king, and I was loving it. This is it, I thought. I can win this. I'll risk it all on my next blow. I gripped my hammer tight and waited for my moment. The tension stung me. Whack! The ocean winds raged against the tower windows. With that sound as my call to battle, I advanced with no mercy in my heart. And then... And then... <laughs> I beat him. I defeated the chestnut. <laughs> that's how it ends. <laughs> Just... Really, that's... Ugh. An even worse beast came next. A nightmare thing. But I beat it too. I rescued Princess Eclair. It was all over. Now that's just... There's no drama on that ending whatsoever. It was just... He beat him. Another thing came. He beat that too. Rescued the princess. He's back to Rogue Port, and that's it. <laughs> maybe... Maybe Luigi is just not a good storyteller. That's his problem. I don't know. <laughs> huh? You think there's more to the story than that? Yes, I do. Not at all. That's it. That's the whole story of the quest for Princess Eclair. The end. But my adventures won't end here, bro. They'll never end. 
And that's all for his stories. Well, sort of. Um, if you recall, back here at the shop, he's selling books. Well, you know, this is the distributor of the Super Luigi books here. Uh, so I'm going to start buying these suckers up so I can get the full story later. Uh, the final book will be available after you beat the game. I think there's five books in all. And um, wait, wait, I just want to check here. Is there another book on the shelf already? No, I didn't think so. Okay. Uh, but yeah, uh, the final book will be available after you beat the game. So I'll do all those stories later on once I get to that point. Um, now, here's another set of stories that we gotta go through here. Lumpy! Ah, Mario, how's it going? Hey, guess what? Got the journal of my hunt for black gold. It's a little embarrassing, but wanna read it? Yes, I would love to. And by the way, I noticed that uh, it doesn't mark the stories that you've already read, so the one that I went through here before, by mistake, nope, doesn't show as being read, so that's good. So here we go, the night before. I'm finally off tomorrow. I filled my pack with cheese and I'm ready to go. My to-do list is crossed off. I owe so much to all my investors, not just money. The old get-rich-quick dream, but this is different. I have a reason. See, I owe it to my hometown. It's so cold there. People are constantly shivering. If I find oil and send it there, the people can use it to heat their homes. Sounds like uh, a La Babam place, actually. <laughs> oil will make me rich and them happy. It seems to be the perfect goal, right? I have always, always had this dream since I was very small. Of course, getting rich is a big part of it too, but who doesn't want money? Money, money, cover me with it, please. Ah, <sighs> well, enough for tonight. So another story, the bazaar, uh, yeah, bazaar fiend, uh, the bazaar fiend. Yeah, it's hmm, kind of a weird name. I don't forget it. <laughs> Why does it have to turn out like this? I got to Toad Town by boat, then took a train to the foot of Mount Rugged. Oh, they're referring to. A boss there okay unfortunately you can only get from Mount Rugged to dry dry desert on foot this is a reference to the first Paper Mario game by the way and tragedy waited for me as I slogged faithfully up that winding trail it was a huge awful vulture yep the vulture is the boss I had read about it in my travel brochures the bazaar uh, <clears throat> bazaar costed all travelers on Mount Rugged Mugget Rugged ah! I hightailed it but bazaar had me in its sights I felt a piercing jolt as its claws dug deep into my backpack after dropping me onto a cliff. Bazaar seemed to forget me and disappear. Oh, that's good. I let out a sigh of relief. When I touched my back, I noticed my pack was gone. Oh, poopers. My pack. In it was all my food and money to start the operation. No! That mangy bazaar made, made off with everything of importance to me. All I have left in this is this journal. A shovel to dig for oil and my life. But perhaps living is miracle enough, or so I'd like to believe. But now, I can't turn back. I climb down the mountain to the desert. A dry, dry desert sprawls out before me, beckoning dreamers and fools. I am both, and I set out with a heart full of dread. Number three, a helping hand. I am now in a place called Dry Dry Outpost. Someone pulled me, lifeless and parched, from the merciless desert floor. It was a Koopa with a fine mustache named Colorado. An angel in a pith helmet. Ah, Colorado. He was a funny character. He was a world-traveling adventure archaeologist. I told him about Bazaar, and my quest for oil, and my dreams of riches and warmth for my people. After I spoke at length, he gave me food and water. I asked him why he should be so kind, and he looked into the distance and said, Turning one's back on an ambitious dreamer invites others to do the same to you, old boy. I just... I just want to believe in every dream this sad old world can muster. This guy, he still chases his own dreams, dusty dreams of archaeology. We stayed up all night discussing each other's dreams. It was great. Mm, reliable guide. I am now at a desert oasis. After Colorado left, I set off for a dry dry outpost to find my digging point. But the desert is so wide, it's impossible to find anything without a guide. I had no idea where I was going, and my head was splitting in the heat. You know, the dry, dry desert really was a pretty confusing place. I mean, <laughs> it was basically a grid. Like, the, the places were connected as a grid. But everything was so similar that it's really difficult to figure out where you are. And if you get flung to a random spot, you get lost pretty easily. Anyway, I'm, get, I'm digressing here. 
My throat was burning and scratchy. Was I awake? Was I asleep? I heard a voice calling to me from far away. Hey, are you a nice guy? If you're a nice guy, then give me something nice. I didn't have the food or water I received from Colorado. I have nothing. Why do you lie here? If you are a nice guy, give me a nice thing and I will help. I croaked. All I have is... All I have is my dream. When I next awoke, I was at the oasis. I was at this oasis. You're awake, I heard. There is actually an oasis in the dry, dry desert, and it was actually required for something in that game. Not going to spoil too much here. There is a squeak there in a gray headscarf. My name is Musfasa. <laughs> Another character from the first Paper Mario. You had nothing to give, but I got something nice anyway. I don't know how or why, but it seems I've been saved by yet another stranger. Do you need a guide? If there is somewhere you want to go, I will take you. Unbelievable! I've actually found a reliable guide! Sweet! The digging points. We're here. I'm finally at the spot where I'm supposed to dig for oil. I was told to draw a line from a blue cactus to a cactus-like rock. I was, went north to a precise... I mean, went north a precise distance from the exact termination point. I ended up here, at a point between dry dry ruins and the oasis. Mouse Fossa has guided me this far, with skill and bravery. He said, you are a nice guy. Your dream will come true. Mouse Fossa believes this. Yeah, I think it's Mouse Fossa because it's a mouse. I mean, oh, it's Mouse Fossa. I've been pronouncing it terribly from the very beginning. <laughs> he left them, leaving me to find fight this battle on my own. I, I think I've been reading stuff for so long now I'm starting to mess up on my reading. But I'm almost done! Don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> uh, all I have to do is dig here until I find oil. That's all. I stocked up on lemons and limes at the oasis so I could last a few days. I must find that oil. Mm -hmm. The long dig. I am digging for oil now, and my hand shakes as I write these perhaps final words. I have been digging from sun up to sundown, but still no sign of that sweet crude. Maybe I've just picked a dry spot in this cursed spot, in this cursed desert. But I'm, I'm sure this this is where Merluvi told me to dig. Yes, I'm sure of it. There's no more food or water. Any of my hopes have dwindled to nothing. Ah, this is it, my dream dies here with me under these unforgiving skies my dream my my wait no this is not it my, my dream is of something else yeah yeah something else dig keep digging i must keep digging arms move body work find oil last story here we go the wrap-up. I am now on a boat back to Deer Rogueport. I did it. I finally struck oil in that dry desert. I have left the day-to-day -day operations to my men in the field and now return home. It all came true. Striking it rich. Finding oil. My dream. But somewhere along the way, this became more than just my dream. So many people have helped me to help to make this dream happen. So many. You had nothing to give. But I got something nice anyway. Dear Mostafa. I said it right! Yes! <laughs> I just want to believe in every dream this sad world can muster. Ah, Colorado. People who lent me money and gave me food and showed me the way. I'm the one who lent them money, by the way. Lots and lots of money. <laughs> so many hands reaching out to help me. I must do something for all of them. That feeling has pushed me even harder. And so he did. He gave me 999 coins. <laughs> I must share this feeling with the people who helped me as I struggled. I must share these words that have seared themselves into my heart. Dreams come true. Lumpy. That's enough. <laughs> and with that, I'm going to end off the part here. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next part.